Good afternoon. Hello. All is well. All is well. Hi, my name is Kate Kane. <laughs> and I'm Katie Girl Nets. And we are coming to you from Blacksburg, Virginia on the East Coast. And we have already filmed this podcast already. We spent about an hour and a half chatting, going over everything, All having things. unbelievable, like, yes. controversial things, yes. you know, craft snark, Reddit, all of that. We went through all of it. We were, you know, weeping and gnashing of teeth <laughs> and then realized that we lost, like, there was no recording. Nothing was happening. And so now we have to do it all over again. But unfortunately, I believe that that is one podcast that has now gone forever into the universe and gone forever. This is going to be a new and different podcast. And we it's going to be better. It's going to be better. It's going to be better. We can't recreate what we did. So let's start. <sighs> it's okay. All is well. I love you. I love you. Love you too. Yes. Now we're going to focus on what you're wearing first. Oh, yes. This. This is a knitting podcast, by the way. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Did we say you're skiing cocaine and I'm Kitty Girl Nuts? We probably did. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the Weekender with a crew neck. And I got the yarn at Yarn Club in Virginia Beach, going to an air show at Oceana with my husband and son. So it's a Surrey and Slub base yes. held together. Yes. And this is a different pattern than the classic Weekender because it's got a different neckline. So oh, it's neck. got a crew neck. Wait. Yeah. The pattern has it? The it? pattern. So it's a new and improved pattern. It's a new and improved pattern. Because the, the other one was a boat neck. And I'm not sure it was as popular as a, like a scoop neck. And then she came out with like a lighter version of the Weekender. Yes. But I knit three of those Weekenders. And I love them. It's still, it might be my most favorite just plain sweater pattern. I think I like it better than this, than the crew neck. Hmm. It's just interesting. Oh, that you like the other one better yeah. than the crew neck. Yeah, I think I like yeah, that Yeah, it's one. a detail. It, it works with this line. Yes. So there's a line that yes. goes up and it continues that line. Yes. So I understand why you like that better. Yes, I do. I'm so. wearing the I'm wearing the halibut from Caitlin Hunter, and, and you've I, seen this before. And well, and I did it out of the linen quill in the, that. whatever that is. You know the the you can see the silk popping out. And my nails are not done. Okay, so <laughs> sorry I didn't have time to go get my nails my done. My nails aren't done either. Okay, so we're not going to be nailless. hand models today. That's uh, okay. So this is what I'm wearing. Um, I really love that pattern. Like it's really growing on me. Just, just the um, what is it? The black and white with the fish. Yeah, it's just I really like cool. I like it. I, I like it a lot. It's a statement. Um, I wear it, and that's the thing. That's that's actually huge because if that's you wear huge, it, that's huge. She wears it. The fact of the matter is, is that I don't wear colorful things. I don't. I wear grays and browns and not much brown anymore, but basically all shades of grays and black and denim and white. And that's about it. So that's, uh, that's the way it is. Nothing um, wrong with that. So that sort of leads me into, you want to go first with your sweater or you want yeah. me to do the tail of two ponchos? Um, let me just, I want to talk about this because I just really love the yarn. This is your Wedgwood. I'm going to take it all the way up there. Oh, yeah. And that is Andrea Mallory's birch sweater. It is a fingering weight yarn on size two needles. And it is a half fisherman's rib. Is that what it's called? Half fisherman's or just fisherman's rib? Well, it could be half. I'm not really sure because one row is all pearl and the next row is pearl knit one below, pearl knit one below, pearl knit one below. And it makes this really lofty fabric that it's so... does not feel like it's... You know, a size two is a sock needle, basically. Yeah, size two needles. What kind of needles are those? They are Chalgu bamboos. Because I lost my um, my source for the Licka bamboos, because Wool Workshop closed, so I'm very sad about that. But I'm doing a helical helix knitting or helical knitting, so that I can blend those colors up really nice, and I won't. Yeah, because it, it looks like one's a little lighter than the other. Yeah. So that gives it sort of a stripey appearance, though, yeah, because which I, one is lighter than the other. You get a little stripey. Yeah, but stripiness. I absolutely love that Wedgwood colorway. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. Um, we can you can still get some. 
I'll leave the link open underneath this video if you want. Yeah. Some yarn. You should do that sweater. It's a, I'll tell you why. That's a great sweater to wear with white jeans in yep. the summer. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a year-round weight. Mm -hmm. um, you can wear, you know, jeans, uh, white pants, a mm -hmm. long white skirt at the beach, out to dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I should make it short sleeves now that you mention it. Yeah, why not? You have tons get, of long sleeves. I would get more wear out of it you if would. I did either short sleeve or three quarters. I was going to say, you could go to the elbow. I think that's very flattering to the elbow. Yeah, cover up the bat wings. You don't got no bat wings, but I do. <laughs> My arms are really deteriorating. I am. Um... Weight training. I have to do some weight training. Yes, more self-improvement. Yeah, mm. never ending. Ah. Okay, um, now I also have, I have the tail of two ponchos. I think it's in my lap. So I started with, you know, the Did Bowie you know, advent. Bowie. I had the color, this is the Corian poncho by Amy Palco. And I started with, you know, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day, day seven, seven, day eight. eight, day eight, day eight day and day I, I got to the red and then I stopped. And I was like, ugh, I don't know. Should I just do solid black on the bottom? And then I realized I'm not going to wear it anyway. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on just using bright colors. And I'm just doing this on size 6, US 6. And I'm following the pattern. It's a one size. I think that's so funny that you do this beautiful knitting and then you don't wear it. I'm a process knitter. And I, Jones you know, I made one. lots of stuff out of my Jones yarn, one. and so I decided to do. Look at this beautiful thing! It's like a, it's like sherbet. So the bright one is double stranded, just by itself. There's no surrey held with it or anything like that. This one has the surrey held with it, and it's just single stranded with surrey. Oh Undyed Surrey. Hold on, I'm gonna grab you for a second. Hopefully, I won't fall out. Oh, can't do it. What are you doing? I'm tr trying to not grab your butt. Okay, okay. I want them to see this. Uh, you move this foot for a second. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? It's like all things sherbet and lusciousness. Yeah. It's now, scary. are you saying you won't wear that either? There's no way in hell I would wear that. You're crazy. But I'm gonna because knit it. this right here. Yeah, that's the undyed. I mean, this is like, it's like sex in a cake, man. Uh, Seriously. It's soft. It's warm. <laughs> like two, two snails. <laughs> like two snails coming up to each other. I guess, I guess we have to be dirty at some point. Or yeah. We have to be us. Well, we're married. Yeah. And you we know, have, we have our husbands. We're allowed to talk about that stuff. That's, yeah. And I think most, most of. We're grown ups. We're Are allowed. We? Yes. We are? Yes. I told told my students the other day this week, I was like, I don't want to be an adult anymore. And they're looking at me like, being an adult's great. And I'm like, shut up. Oh, no, you always want, you know, when you're a child, you're just like running on that, you know, on that treadmill to like get to the end. Like, hurry, hurry, hurry. And then you realize, oh, wait. And then you grow up and then you're like, oh, shoot. And then you stop. The conveyor belt keeps going and you see everybody, all the old people falling off the end, right? And, and you just keep going. And, and we're like, next. Yipes. And then at this point, you're running backwards. It's too late. You're still moving forwards and then um, you fall and you're dead. And we're next. Oh, well. Whenever you're, whenever the... <laughs> the parents start dying you know you're next that's when it happens anyway so i Let's talk about death and destruction yeah always and i love this purple look at that purple yeah you, there's some colors that you can barely see yeah, there's a nice purple there that you can barely that's a, see that's a statement piece i cannot believe that it's almost sacrilege well maybe i'll give it away it. as a gift Maybe I give a lot of my stuff away, so maybe I'll that's give it a away. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. Or, that's an excellent idea. Or I'll just sell kits, you know, because, I mean, this is my yarn, so I could sell kits. Well, that kit needs to be sold because that is scrumdiliumptious. Scrumdiliumptious? Speaking of scrumdiliumptious, look at this. Okay, so we have a bunch of self-striping <sighs> yarns. <sighs> so, you know, how you're a dyer. How in the world do you dye this? It's, isn't it have where you have like the yarn going like... You have to kind of do like where you figure out the length of... Like there's some the contraptions repeat. that you have... Yeah, and then you figure out then how much of that... You, you make a super extra long skein. Okay. And then... Or you wrap yarn in its sort of configuration. Okay. Long, that's how you get the stripes. You can't take like a... 
Okay, here's our most recent colorway. That's like. What did you call that? What's the name? We haven't that? named it yet. I wild. I better figure out how to. I better name it pretty soon because I'm putting it on for sale here. But it's like a rain cloud with lots of little fluorescenty colors, and it's just sort of a Valentine'sy kind of color. Um, what was the point I was trying to say? What was I talking about? Self striping. Self striping. So, but you can't really like lay the skein down in a tray and get a stripe. The only way you could do that is like our Bowie 25 colorway, yeah, which is that. that. That will, that will, this particular uh, skein, because only 25% of it has the color on it. Let me show you what I mean. And that way you can either do a sign pooling, you can, you know, you can do plan pooling, but you also get micro stripes when you do socks. So the micro stripes, you know that what that means, micro striping? Mm -hmm. I do. Sorry, my brain, if I was quiet, it's because my brain checked out to think about what I could net with it. It was thinking, hmm, socks. What do I do with that? Or do you make socks still? No. No, okay. I hate socks. Oh. I mean, I love a hand knit sock. Don't get me wrong. Love them. Knitting them? Don't like. Mm -mm. Don't like it at all. Me neither. Um, that is uh, Look at that. You know how I feel about neons. I love neons. Yeah, it has a lot of fun neon -y speckles. I love it. There's no such thing as too much neon. No, I mean, she could have speckled the entire skein. I would be completely happy. And I might actually get her to add more. Do you want more? Okay, we'll leave it here then. And I'll Triple or quadruple? Quadruple. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it needs a lot more speckles. All and right. What is the what is the base color? Like she dyed it. It's like a rain cloud. Like it's like a okay. a really light gray. I love it. But I'm gonna have her add more. It needs more. I'm, I'm looking at it now. I'd be like, and then now there will be a sweater on this. Yeah. Or, okay. Or or that um poncho I did from Coco Nets. Of course, my brain just. Sh oh shot yeah, what itself. was that? It was church mouse also, and it was a rectangle that you how you seamed it was how yeah. you put it together, right? Yes. <gasps> oh, I can see it. I can visualize. It. Is that what you're gonna do with it? Probably. You could double strand it, probably. You could double strand it and do the quarry and poncho. Mm hmm That's actually a fun pattern. It is. But you'd have to double strand it. Mm hmm Let's see what's going on here. Veronica, that's the name of the pattern. Veronica. Caitlin Hunter? No, it's um, Coco Knits. It's one of oh. those Coco Knits. Oh, yeah, it's I really remember. It's really funny because you, you knit, you start with cuffs, and then you knit this epic, epic. I showed it. It was that um, Tiffany Blue thing I showed last time. Oh. Tiffany. Blue. That's not the Church Mouse poncho. No, but it's, but it's a good poncho. But the Church okay. Mouse poncho is a great poncho because it's just basic. It's just a rectangle. Which is what I love about Church Mouse patterns is they're just simple and they're nice and tight, like really nice I don't nice think they have a store anymore. Really? They used to be in Bainbridge Island. They're not there. I don't think they have a store anymore. Maybe they have just patterns now. I'm not really okay. sure. Well, that makes me I'm, sad. I know. I uh, feel like all the knit shops are closing down. I feel like it, too. I feel like there's a lot of dyers also that are just like, I can't do it anymore. And then yarn shops, yeah, it seems like there's a fair amount. But, you know. Don't you feel, do you kind of feel like you're on a treadmill? No, not anywhere near like okay. I did when I had a yarn shop. Okay. The yarn shop was Groundhog Day every day. I and if I had a bad that. day, it was like, I'm the worst retailer in the world. And then when I had a good day, I was like, I'm a success. I and it was you, a mix of both. I remember right? you telling me that one day. We had had like a huge day. Mm -hmm. And I was doing up the totals for the day, and we were finishing, and she goes, well, you know, tomorrow. We start it? all over again. And I'm like, yeah, so? Yeah, but it's like... And she's like, but it won't be like this. It'll be like zero. And I was like, oh. Yeah, cause that's the problem. Like, when you have a really huge day, then the next day, typically, all your customers already came in. You know, like, when you're in a smaller area, like not New York City, when you're in a smaller area, if you have, like, a big sale or whatever, everyone, like, buys a bunch of yarn and then you don't see them for a while. So, yeah. I don't miss having a yarn shop at all. Not one single bit. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, we also... I'm a, I'm a bossy wench. I'm a bossy wench. People also like mispronounce skein and they say 
Skeen. 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 They say Skeen. Yeah, that drives and me crazy. And then they don't know why cocaine doesn't match. So I thought, oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebrand phonetically. So I thought, oh, I'm going to I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to show that this is actually how my name is pronounced and I'll make new ball bands and blah blah blah. And I showed it to Saint my head dyer Saint Saint Stephanie and she took one look at that and I swear she peed her pants. She skank. said she said scon cocon is thou pe people will be calling or you. Or you could see skank if you're not careful. Yeah, skank. You're welcome. Yeah. I know. I I called myself skanky along like that's nothing new. That was that was out there, but so I decided not to rebrand. So there. No, the skanker came. She's making me go through all this list here. It's like nothing is I'm naturally. A I'm a school teacher. I'm a school teacher. But not. This is not natural. Like it's not like things come up and then. Okay, so. No, but I like that. I wanted to make sure. I know. I really wish I could do it because it was really cool. You but could. No. It could. You could make it not maybe not your ball band, but you could make it like your alter ego. Okay. All right. I'll have She's to like, think about what how. The hell do you mean an alter ego? I'm like. Mm. Okay. So should we talk about scandals then? Well, you have to educate me on the Reddit. Okay. Thing. So Reddit, you know, Reddit is a um, online. Mm -hmm. Um app where you can go and it's mainly message boards that's what popped up the first thing as soon as i opened it what is that it's a mushroom ew it what? looks like an alien baby it's a mushroom that is not a mushroom are you serious well, i just downloaded reddit and the first no, thing that popped that was a, a head it's a face and nose read it update on this thing They think it's a Sculpey on a wire thing. They don't oh. believe it's a real mushroom. Okay. Well, that's All disappointing. Right. Anyway, if you go into something called Craft Snark, I talked about it two podcasts ago that I went there and I did read what people said about my Ryan Beck Wool and Folk video. And I, I did have my feelings hurt a little bit. Not really, though. I found it really more interesting than anything. I found it interesting to hear what people thought about me. Good, bad, the ugly. Just curious. Just more curious. So I went there and I noticed that there's something going on right now. A big thing that's going on is um, there's a, a well-known, fairly large dyer of sock yarn. And she kind of had a meltdown because smaller dyers were asking her for, you know, what are your recipes or where do you get your dyes or where do you get... And I guess somebody had copied one of her colorways and she kind of went off the deep end and she started um, sort of publicly, you know, bashing people and she disabled her Instagram account. It's always and a mistake. She was really volatile back, and people were screenshotting stuff. Everybody's screenshotting everybody else and yelling and screaming and whatever. Well, I went over there to read it, and really what it gets down to is she was very concerned that people were stealing her ideas. And when she went to art school, her teacher told her never to see other people's work, to only focus on your own work and never look at what anyone else is doing because it will mess up with your own you won't actually have like original ideas or new ideas so that means don't go to an art gallery like don't what you know don't do that so i don't i, I don't as what what's the word i'm not an adherent i don't think that's i think that's the stupidest thing i've ever heard okay <laughs> but anyway i do think that she should be able to block whoever she wants so if she wants to block someone she thinks is copying her that's fine I did block someone. I had Just an one? You've only blocked one person. I have, no. I've blocked other people, but the one that I blocked, I blocked because, and it's, it's so stupid to block because it's not like they can't just get another account and you don't know who they are and they just start following you. And I mean, they can see your stuff whether you block them or not. Ugh. Right? So I had this guy who lives in Florida who is an indie dyer. And he contacted me and asked if he could sell my yarn. He just wanted my colorway, the special. And so he um, begged and begged and begged. And I finally agreed to it. And I sent him like 60 skeins of the special on Hot Sock. 
he had a, an update type situation and he sold out in less than five minutes. So he frantically emailed me back and he said, Gina, we sold all your yarn. I've got to get more people are, you know, emailing me. You've got it. And I said, it took me six months to get you those 60 skeins. There is, I am so glad that you sold them, but there is no way that I can get you another box of them. It's just not possible. And it's I'm labor also, intensive. they're labor intensive, but I'm also really into scarcity. Like don't flood the market with something like you don't like, let's just build up the excitement again. Like don't just have a bunch more, you know, let's just get them there. And you know, well, he was not happy about that. I could tell that he was, he was very short when I said, you know, can we think of a different way? I he was very curt and short and that was it. And I was like, wow. Okay. Um, and then he just started copying me. Like he started doing specials. He started doing exactly the same thing maybe a couple days later, like he just jumped in. He's like, well, if that bitch won't sell me her yarn, well, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it better than her. Okay, that's fine. Except that it was literally everything. It was everything I was doing. He was copying and including the big baby grands I was doing. He was doing his own version. I mean, it was so obvious and it hurt my feelings, but again, what can you do? You just know, I don't want to do business with that person. You know, that that person is not, you know, we're all kind of be nice to help everybody out, you know, and buy yarn from each other and, and like to have this really nice warm community. But occasionally some people are total assholes and he was one of those people. Do you, do you feel like the crafting communities in general just kind of are they choose sides and you know kind of do these little wars with each other do you think that's normal i think it's normal but like we had the adela and christy glass thing that was a big you know intense time where i was friends with both of those people and how did you thread that needle not very well but you did it I, I think I did here. it. I think I did it, and I think <clears throat> that those people don't hate me. Um, so I somehow managed to not. I just, you know, I, I don't know. That was just a bad time. So there can be some, you know. Sometimes you feel like you're forced to take sides, but I don't like it. I've never liked mm -hmm. it unless somebody has like morally wronged me in some way. I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon. Like, I just want to treat people the way they treat me. And if they're nice to me, then I am nice back, basically. You're nice like, all the way around. Well, I've never really known you to be vindictive. Not really. Well, I don't hold grudges. That's no, the one thing don't. that I do not. I refuse. I, in fact, if I'm mad at somebody, I'll forget about it. Like, probably if I saw that guy, that, that really super yarn snob guy... What would you do? Hug him? I probably would go up to him and say, you know. How are you? Let's just, whatever was between us, let's just not have it. Because I don't also like, I you know, you just want to do some, you want to do, I don't want to say, I don't want to say, what would Jesus do? I don't want to say that, but what would he do? I mean, you, to me, like, if you want to know what, like, somebody that was really nice what they would do or how they would handle something, then you look to that person who is the extreme version. And then we're all, you know, we're all losers, you know, down oh. here. You know what I'm saying. I, I do, mean, I'm just laughing at you. You know, um, but, but you sort of aspire to be a good person in general. And so we have good examples of that. So you try to go more that direction. You try to, in, you try to indoctrinate yourself with, good things and good be around good people and nice things and being nice what am i trying to say do unto others as you would have to that do. yeah love right your neighbor as yourself right love the one you're with love the one you're with so i didn't like that he did that I, it hurt my feelings it switched shift gears for me in terms of how i was dying because i didn't want to die special after that mm -mm. but you know i'm over it now
Yeah. I'm over completely over it. I don't care anymore. So now you have to find out what the new hottest thing on the market is. And I really do think it's this. What? That the sweater? Wedgwood, the Wedgwood. Oh, the Wedgwood. Okay. I really do. But that's just me. Um, but you know I get obsessed about something for a while. And I'm kind of getting about. in the mood for a variegated sweater myself. Because uh -huh. I've been doing temp semi-solids and stuff. I'm yeah, kind of in very... the mood. I think I want to do a sweater like that. It's gorgeous. Maybe I'll do it out of our new colorway too. That well, I had a question. We're gonna add more. We're gonna add more speckles on. You have this, to go grab that skein over there. Which one? You know the hot pink one right there. Oh, that's okay. your colorway because that's my Barbie colorway. Yeah, she has a Barbie colorway that I've been looking at, and at William Byrd Middle School and High School, like that is. I mean, the teachers, well, the kids the are all wearing pants like this. Yes. Everybody's wearing Barbie right now. Yeah. So, how long, my question is, how long can a color be this popular? Barbie's going to be popular for a while, probably at least through the Grammys. Not Grammys, the Oscars. When will that take place? That's sometime in the summer, I think. Okay. So, we're going to see a lot of uh, Barbie pink bikinis, cover-ups, tennis so. shoes. And we do, you know, matching. We're pretty I much now doing all thing. matching scarves. Let me tell you, those scarves right there. Like, we I, have need long about, ones I need now. about a hundred of them. Like. I know, and we have uh, long ones now. Mm. Long and skinny, so you can like time in your belt with jeans mm. and do a French tuck starting in front. Starting doing a new trend again. No, I, I think I saw it somewhere else. I'm, I'm not starting a trend. Um, but, <laughs> um, so yeah, these are our socks. These are our Barbie sock sets. So, so they're really beautiful. cute. So we've started adding the scarves to the, you get the, the mini skein, the skein, and the scarf. Um, and then we also started doing, um, you know, yeah, the big is... birdie type yarn. So remember I talked about how I found the Lamb and Kid Big Birdie base and I got it to see whether I was going to like it. And I do feel like they've got a lot of good colors. I, I don't think we need to do tonals, I think. Is this a little bit kind of like the, the special? That's sort of our new special. It's more, it's got less dye on it, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's got not pink versus red. Well, they're all different. I mean, like if I pulled another skein out of it, it would be like more red. Than, it just depends on how the dyes in the pots, you know, since we cattle dye, so we don't dye in trays and put them in ovens. We dye in thick pots with either less water or more water. Okay. So that's that's just how we've done it. And it does look different than the people that put things in trays or dye in different ways. I mean, definitely has a different process. But no, yeah, it's it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. Because I'm just going to sit here and like play with it now instead of looking at the camera. So if you like Big Birdie and you were looking for speckles or variegated We've got you covered. Mm. So um, there's a link below if you want to give them a try. Um, I'll have that down Love there. It. Love it. You know. You're like, give it back to me. I just, you know, there's just so many fun colors in there. It's just fun. Fun, can, fun, fun. I can only handle my hair down for so long. And then I'm like, and we're done. Get it off the neck. It's a lot darker than it's showing, though, because it's so bright in here. So just imagine it's darker. Let's see if this will hold in my hair for a while. <gasps> Better? <gasps> yes. I might have a clip if you need a clip. I'm good to go. Um, it's just off my neck. Here's some socks I'm doing. There's no rhyme or reason to this podcast, by the way. We had actually a good system going the first time we did it. Now we're just... We're just doing it. It's fun. Okay. I love it. So I decided to make some black socks, which is the most boring thing you'll ever do in your whole life. And but plus you're it's probably make you blind. going to wear them more than any other socks that I've ever done. So they're covered in dog hair and cat hair and bird feathers, FYI. You got a bird. I did notice that. Yeah. What's the bird's name? I don't know. It's Marcella's bird. Oh. So I did um I did forty eight stitches. On a size US 3, I double-stranded the skein of black. Safe I don't know how you, how you can even see straight now. It's pretty hard. <laughs> and then Kitchener the toe, and I did a 2x2 two two rib. And I did that 2x2 two two rib so that I would not have any ladders running up the sides. 
because mm -hmm. I get ladders on the sides of my socks. And so here's the second one. This is what it looks like when you knit a tube. I mean, when you knit, knit two purl two, it's, it turns into a tube. But I've, I'm through the heel, and I've got the rest of the sock to do. So I will finish these, and I will wear these. Now, I will tell you, and I'm going to be straight up honest with you. Okay. Okay, did it again. Anyway, this time we're okay. So, but we have 20 more minutes and that's it. So, that's fine. this is the end of it. Okay, I will be completely honest with you and just tell you that the bigger your stitches on your socks, the more uncomfortable <laughs> it is. So, if you do it on sock weight, you're using zeros, ones, one and a half twos, you're going to have a really nice, thinly gauged. You want negative ease socks. Mm -hmm. They feel really good on your feet. They feel great. Oops. But we've gotten into this sort of like, oh, I've got, you know, I want to go faster or I want a thicker sock or whatever. And so a lot of people are doing DK socks and they're using bigger needles. So like, you know, US 3s and 4s, casting on 44 stitches, 48 <coughs> stitches, Excuse whatever. Me. And... But what's happening also when you go through menopause, the soles of your feet, the, the padding on the soles of your feet start to go away unless you're taking human growth hormone. Because Becky didn't have any padding on her feet and now she does and that's the only thing she's doing differently than me is human growth hormone. So, now what do you use human growth hormone? Not human growth hormone. Hormone replacement theory. There we go. I was like going human growth well, hormone. Yeah we're injecting. I was like I don't remember this. And, then, and then, cat, we're, then we get cattle branded after we get our human growth hormone. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. Okay. It just so what I'm trying to say is that DK socks are not that comfortable. They're not that comfortable. You can feel the stitches on the bottom of your feet. At least I can. So it's not the end all be all, okay? Um, so what the moral of the story is, is bigger is not better. Only in this respect. I'm sorry. I'm a terrible person. You are. That's okay. You love me anyway. I do. And big boobs are not good either. No, I'm not a fan. No. I have them. In they're, fact, they're if I trial. didn't have them anymore, I don't want them chopped off with cancer, but if I didn't have boobs anymore, I would be so happy. I could Just, run without putting on, you know, like two jog bras, you know, so I can get hit in the face. You'd be free. Boob. You'd be free. And I would just be free. Yeah, I would be like a gazelle without... Without boobies? Yeah. <laughs> but again, I... But I don't want no cancer. to get cancer and have them chopped off, okay? <clears throat> Whoever's listening, I don't want them chopped off. <laughs> so, okay, um, what else? Um, lots, lots and lots of socks, right? socks. Um, you need to dip your needles into some hot water chicken. These are just ridiculous. Those are the, I you know what those are, yes, right? Yes, I do. Those okay. are those uh, signatures. These are, are they? Yeah, those are signatures. Yes, they are. Now that I can, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and let's see. I still want um, you to buy signatures. I know you do. It's the gonna, cord. They are selling their company, I, I found saw. out. They've Almost, sold it to some, it's sold or no, selling? No, they're selling. I wonder what the price is. A million dollars? Multi-millions? I don't okay. know. It's that good. I'm also million. doing this. This is an old Madeline Tosh covered in dog, cat, and bird hair. I really am surprised at... Oh, wait a minute. What? Okay, I understand now. Took me a second. What? I was reading I wasn't reading your knitting and I got confused. Oh. So I'm reading it again now. Thank you. This is farmhouse That's sock by Madeline Tosh. Which means farmhouse it. means it is not uh superwash, right? Oh. I don't know. Not that you care. In fact you prefer non superwash yarn, as I recall. No, I prefer superwash. You do? I do. For especially for socks. Oh, okay. But I like non superwash more and more and more. Like I'm liking it more because it's funny when you start feeling like sometimes you can feel superwash and it's not soft, and then sometimes you can feel it and it's soft. So some my hands can be sensitive to the nylon or the or the processing or mm -hmm. the nylon or something that's in it, and I don't find like this. I don't find this superwash. This is just normal superwash yarn, yeah. like sock yarn. It's not that soft. No. So I'm, I'm starting to modify what I like to 
to knit. Uh, again, lots and lots of rainbow striped, lots of socks that I have never finished. I see a, you know? I see a theme here. Right. They all start to look the same, and that's why... And I finished my Cozy Knitter stripe socks. They're very nice, but I did them on size ones and they are still too loose. So I know now that I have to be doing my socks on US zeros. Oh. And that sucks. It's oh. too small. It's my, just too yes. small. I agree. Why did we never buy a sock knitting machine? Why did we never do that? I think I almost had you talked into a knitting machine. I ever so often think about doing it, but then I wonder if I actually would use it. Because Just remember I bought a sock it. machine? I, I a bought a sweater machine. machine, remember? And what happened with that? It's in the storage unit. You've ever broken it out? Never. Never even tried it? Never. I got it on eBay for like $700. You want it? No. I have four adults living in one house. There's no room for that. I have a spinning wheel and a loom that I don't use either of them. So both your children, your married daughter lives with her husband yep. where? Well, they're currently living with, with his, parents his parents. Because okay. and they're getting ready to move to D.C. because he got a job with Deloitte up there. Oh, okay. I know. I, have, I want everyone living together. I have a completely different concept now that Ben moved out. I do not want, I want multi-generational living. That's what I want, unless you hate the person that's living with you and you can't get along. Now, I don't hate my mother. I love my mother, but I'm telling you, it would be very uncomfortable and probably my husband would commit suicide if she moved in with us. So that probably isn't going to happen. But I really think that families should be all living together. If you can, you should. Well, I'm kind of, uh, we live in like 2,200 square feet. Well, if you had the space. If we had the space. Throw, if you, you had a, like a wing, your daughter and her husband could live in the wing. Yes. Very happily. Very happily. Having some space, having a little deadbolt, having some space within the house, but everybody together. And everybody having kids there in the house and, and the grandparents and the kids. And you see the grandparent getting old and die. You, death is not like removed to some facility somewhere. It's right there. You can just sort of see what things are, how it's, it's going to go good. down. I think it's good for moms too. Because if you have, well, if you have a good mom. I didn't have one. My mom's been past 12 years. But... Um, Neither one of us had a great mom. No. And I love my, I, I do love my mother, and I don't want to criticize her, but she was really focused on herself. And was yours focused on herself, too? Yeah. Yeah, she was, um, well, my mom was, your mom may have been, is narcissistic the right word? I don't want to say that. I don't want to use that term lightly, because I feel like we throw that term around really easily now. My, my mom was actually mentally ill. She was schizophrenic, so... It was, it was a nightmare. Both my parents had high anxiety. And the, the, you know, the intense drive to be successful drove them. You know, once they had me, it was like, it didn't One matter and how much I begged for a sibling because I just knew in, instinctively that it was not right to be an only child because you need to have some family during bad times in your life, like the death of your parents. Having yes. a sibling can be very comforting, and I didn't have that. Yes. But it, but I knew that they just knew that if they, there, there was so much career stuff they wanted to do that having more than one child. So I just was living with very, like, extreme people, lots of anxiety, lots of needing, you know, probably low self-esteem because they needed to be successful. Like success was viewed as paramount. It was the most important. It was money, thing. power, recognition. beauty, recognition, all this. My mother was very beautiful, had a lot. She married a, you know, a man who was going to be very successful. He was getting a PhD from Brown University and I mean she knew she they got married after two weeks and then they just they were just full on careers 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 and um and they raised you to be that way yes raised me to be that way and it's the biggest lie ever told 
the lie that you can have everything, the lie that you have to have a career to be worth anything, just like boys, girls can have everything boys can. But we're not playing with the same playing field. No, know? we don't we, have the same materials. We are not made of the same stuff. We just are not. And you can't do it all. You can't have it all. Well, you'd be miserable. Like, I think if you try to have it all, you're miserable because the one thing that you're chasing is the one thing that you can actually have, which is peace and um, peace. 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 Because I think that's the thing I want most out of this life is peace. Just to be at peace within myself mm -hmm. and as much as possible with my fellow man. Mm -hmm. As much as possible. I, I know like it's not. Too. But no, I like that too. Completely doable, but it's a good idea. It's a nice thought. I, I feel like um, we're depressing, but... Yeah, we're, are we depressing you? Sorry. We, we don't need to be depressed. Okay, well then we can switch, switch gears. We'll go to... Because we're getting um, philosophical here. New York. Okay, I went to New York with Ben, and we went to Nitty City. They were, the yarn shop there, they were having a 25-year, I think it was 25, I don't know. And they were um, giving out cup cookies, and I bought this book... There, I wanted everything was like twenty percent off or something oh. in the store. So, Show them the necklace on the back. That's cool. Well, that's what I'm. That's oh, what I bought the book sorry. for. I bought the book for that necklace because I thought I've got like different. I've got so much yarn. Obviously, wouldn't it be fun to have? That's something? a nice statement piece. I think it would be really cool to make them as gifts. It looks like it'd be fairly easy. Well, that I don't know yet. Let me look at it. You keep talking about. And I wanted to show one more picture. You keep talking about New York, and I will. Get and this in there. is the picture I want to that's, show. That's a cool picture. That's a great picture. All right, here you go. All right, yeah, and you so keep talking about that. So then, uh, I don't recommend anyone watch four Broadway shows in a row in New York. <laughs> I think go to New York, watch one show, and that's it, one and done. Do not do multiples because then they start losing. Like their specialness, their value. All right, we saw How to Dance in Ohio, walked out halfway through it, did not like it. It was a predominantly all autistic cast, but it was not a good story. I didn't like it. And it was more of like, we're, we're going to make... We're going to make it really quiet in here and not having any flashing lights and not doing any of those things because so there's no one's triggering and we have safe rooms over here. Or there's fidget toys at the end of the bubble. And I, I just, I wasn't into it. So um, we got up halfway and left, which is not always the best thing to do, but I did it. And um, then we saw six, which was six is there's the six wives of Henry the eighth or something like that, you know, like Anne Boleyn. So that's and what that is. That's what this is. I'm showing my extreme ignorance because I didn't know what six was. So, okay. well, I didn't know till I got there and was trying to find things. You know, we bought our tickets when we got there. I didn't have any plans, you know, just like walking around Broadway. What are we going to watch next? A fairy tale workplace. And it was, um, it was pretty good. I liked it. And then we saw Kimberly Akimbo. And that was good, too. That's about an older uh, woman that is 16 with all her friends in high school. She has this rare disease where she's aging rapidly and she will die. Like, so a 65-year-old woman played a 16-year-old girl on stage. So that was fun and interesting. Music was pretty good. Then we saw Aladdin, and Aladdin was okay. It was a classic Broadway show, but... Um, it's kind of tired and it needs to, it needs to go. It needs to go. It's like run its course. You know, Phantom of the Opera is not there anymore. Aladdin shouldn't be there either. Uh, Lion King though, number one best. Love it, love it so much. Okay. Um, what are we watching? What are you watching? Well, I have finished Outlander as far as what has been produced so far. Okay. And then I'm re-watching Sopranos right now. Oh, that's so good. Oh, oh, oh. But I'll tell you what's good. Do you have, um... Stars, the Serpent Queen. We on have stars. everything. The Serpent Queen on Stars. You get, you gotta have to like, you know, lower your standards a little. Like if you like, Serpent what? Serpent Queen. I serpent forget the name queen. of the. I forget the name of the actress who is. It's um. Uh, is that it? Oh, my brain is shot. But anyway, it was Catherine of Medici. However you say her name. Anyway. Yeah. So she was an evil, evil woman. Brilliant. 
not beautiful, mm. but brilliant. Mm. And she was basically Queen of France. Okay. And she ruled the world. Okay, sounds interesting. It's very interesting. I'm probably not making it as interesting as it is, but it has a lot of graphic nudity and stuff in it. So oh. you got to be ready for that. Okay. You know, it is stars. After okay. All. Stars okay. is kind of quasi porn. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. You know that they have like modesty coverings and stuff, but it doesn't look like it. <laughs> okay. Not that I would know. Okay. I really wouldn't know. Okay. <laughs> She's like, oh my gosh, Liar. where do I go from here? Okay, well, where we go is I'm watching. I'm waiting <laughs> I'm, wa I'm waiting for season four to come of The Chosen. It's in theaters now. It's the first two episodes of season now. And I'm, I'm not going to the theater, but I will watch it when it is streaming. And I get to drool over Jonathan Rami, the hottest Jesus ever was ever played. I know that's just... It's so sacrilegious to Katie. Katie's like, I can't believe you're saying that. Well, but he is hot. What well, can I say? As an actor, he is. He is. Yeah, I know, but he he's attractive. an icon of. I, he's, he, like he's, I said, he, he's an. He's. Um, yeah, what he's an say? icon of Jesus. Okay. And so um, the Bible says that there was nothing humanity humanly attractive about Jesus. In the Old Testament, it says. No. That. Sorry, baby. No. There was nothing about his physical appearance that we would desire him. Isaiah. I'll find it. I think that he was... I know I'm destroying all your I hopes and dreams think, here. I'm popping every lovely bubble you have. I'm so sorry. I think Having a friend that, like me is just the pits. Having what? Having a friend like me is the pits. No, it's not. I do have to get you and Carol together, though. We have to go to lunch with Carol. Okay. And we I'm, have to I'm sit down. down and talk religion. She's probably it's really fun. Be like, stay away from her. No, no, but she was like, why didn't you want, to, why did you not, she doesn't want you to read the Old Testament? Like, I don't know why, but she, because Katie I just says, don't read it. it. No, just, it's not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just, you know, you can get really hung up on stuff. Isaiah 53, he grew up like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Yeah, I mean, Isaiah, okay, so he wasn't like this beautiful angel, like gorgeous, blonde, gorgeous angel. He was a Middle Eastern black man, Jewish black man who was, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 5'8 with short brown hair mm -hmm. and a beard. I mean, that's just I what think he, he just, is. I think he probably just looked average. He just looked like every common person back then, and that mm -hmm. was the whole point. And then he was born as a baby, the most vulnerable creature on in yes. the world were you talking to us no. oh yes and babies are very vulnerable uh, obviously no shit kitty <laughs> no shit see they don't come out walking and talking thankfully because <laughs> you might have been like go away i wanted to see that i wanted to show you this really quick this is really cute like you that. keep looking what you were going to read something else no i, I just, just wanted to show you this really quick Isn't because christy glass um got my bowie advent and she crocheted the she took every color of the advent and then she crocheted the little, this, magic circles. little circles and made me a necklace of all absolutely the 25 colors. Probably 24, but I don't know. Maybe 25. I, I think it's precious. I think it's 24. But I thought that was so sweet of her to do that. Because that is such a time-consuming, yeah. detail-focused... Yeah, but now I have, like... I felt, to remember the Bowie advent, I have the necklace. To and remember, look, like, oh, it, No, she didn't she, put it in Roy G. Biv, but it's still No, pretty. she put it in order of the colors. I love it. She put it in order of the colors, okay? How you opened them up. I mean, come on. So, how did you come up with the idea for those particular colors? I, I might have asked you this before, and forgive me. We just did album cover. I went through and I did all the album covers for okay. her, for Stephanie. She went through, and then we talked about each one, and then we were like, okay, what's missing? And then, I, and then we just, you know, we just kept strategizing, and then we just came up with it. But honestly, are you gonna do another one next year? Absolutely. I was about to bring it. I was about to, like, where is no. it? Well, first of all, I wouldn't do it next year anyway. I would do it the following year. I'm, I'm doing them every other year. But That's honestly, smart. I don't like it. It's so stressful. And it doesn't matter. I mean, I got 
overwhelmingly like a hundred percent of positive feedback from it now some people might not have liked it or whatever but i got a lot of lots and lots of positive feedback on the packaging of did you cap the number that you sold yeah you did so you said yeah. i'm only going to make this many you didn't like say okay i'm opening it up no and however many buy it no no is how many i'll make no no that would be because it's too much it's just too much it's an, it is levels of hell. It is really tempting to do that because you make a crap ton of because money. Because it's it might a lot not of money. The follow through. I mean, it's two hundred and well, you, you don't have a choice. You you have to follow through. There's no yeah, and you, you know it has to get there before Christmas starts. So it's not. There's no getting around this. Well, there's, I don't know. Not all business people are created equally. So, so for well, example, twenty five. I was going to put up a bow twenty five for you to see. Oh, what? Go ahead. Talk. For talk. example, yeah. Um, I have a massage therapist yeah. because after my car wreck yeah. a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. I have a herniated disc and C six, C seven, whatever. Anyway, um, it has become a part of my well being. And the place that we were going was Pure Spa. It was on Franklin Road near Finks and North Cross. Okay. She just abruptly shut their doors. Went out of business, and she's still selling massages online. She has gift cards that are out there that are oh, not being sold. Oh, that's not ethical. No, it is not. But here's the thing. So if you are in Roanoke, and you are a fan of Pure Spa, and you want to continue with some of their therapists, they cannot honor the gift card because that was Pure Spa's money. It didn't go to them. Mm. But Eric's Massage and Body Works, that's where my masseuse is, and he's fantastic. I need a massage. So Google him. Eric's massage and tell him Katie sent you. I probably wouldn't. Uh, I don't know if I would go to Roanoke to go to the massage. So we're we're in Blacksburg right now. This is where I live. This is forty five minutes from where Katie mm -hmm. lives and where my yarn shop was. And it says forty minutes on eighty one, which yeah. is awful. I mean, just absolutely the worst drive ever. Mm -hmm. Just the trucks and the, the trucks are bad. There's always traffic and there's a standstill mm -hmm. where you wait and it's just a complete and utter nightmare. So I probably am going to go to massage therapists here in town because well, there are really good ones here. I believe you because, I mean, this is Blacksburg, you know, I think you well, guys... Well, there was a massage school here, actually. Blue Ridge Massage School was here. Well, I think in Blacksburg, you guys probably focus more on, you have more of a self-care movement here than we do in Roanoke. Yeah. Roanoke well, is a little more... Roanoke is a little more blue collar. It is a little more blue collar. Yeah. But I'm telling you... I really believe in massage now. It has really saved. It saved my body. It has done wonders for my psyche. It I love has been it. Really wonderful. I love it. And it's not that expensive. I mean, it it can be. It can but... be, but it's not that expensive. Because if you think about it, like how often do you do it? Once a month. I'm going. I'm telling you, I go religiously once a month. Yes. Ninety minutes. Heaven. Well, it makes because I elected not to have surgery on my neck, so mm. it's keeping me out of. I can tell after about two weeks I need another one, but I don't, who has time or money for that? But I really love Shauna Broughton and Eric Valentine. They're really great. Well, that's great that you have a good one because that's a really nice them. thing to have. You know, it's good to have. And trust. Well, yeah, because you're getting naked under a blanket. I was going to show you this. Isn't that beautiful? Um, this is a yak. And is sorry. that undyed? Yeah, yes. It's a yak. Look at that. And this is so beautiful. And then this is my yak, like DK weight. It's called Dream DK. And I'm going to hold those together and I'm going to do a sweater. I think we're doing a knit along with Bobaleros and Leslie Friend. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this sweater and I'm going to do mine without sleeves. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, did you tell us what yarn this was? That's my Dream Base. Oh. It is yak and silk. Oh my gosh. What? Well, is, is this undyed? Mm-hmm. That is undyed. Mm-hmm. I can't decide if it's silver or taupe. It's taupe. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah, I like it. But I really, really, really like these. Um, she's making fun of my glasses. I am. I actually look good on you. I oh, think really? they look good on Why, you. Thank you. Oh, I forgot to say what I was... Besides The Chosen, I'm watching Louder Milk which is about a guy that um, runs an AA meeting. He runs AA meetings, and it's some really <clears throat> funny shit. And then I'm reading Go Ask Jeeves, which is a really, really old book, and I'm about to start this. Because my parents, my mother is from Wilkes-Barre, 
and they had a terrible flood. And this is a book, I think, that talks about that flood. So I'm going to read that. It does look like an interesting book. It does look like an interesting book. Um, and yeah. that's a nonfiction book. That's not necessarily a f f historical fiction book. It looks like it's nonfiction. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's I think it's nonfiction. Yeah, because it has pictures in it and stuff and the area. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to read next. Um, yeah. Oh, that's fun. Um, and that's what I'm going to... Okay, I was also diagnosed with ADHD. Hmm. Never saw that coming. <laughs> and so I'm going to get on Wellbutrin. Sorry. And we're going to find it's fine. And we're going to see if anything changes. Do the piles go away in my house? Is the hyperactivity going to be tamped down? Am I going to stop casting on projects and not finishing them? Am I going to... Um, what else? All of a sudden be made perfect. Not know where anything is. Like, forget what I'm doing. Forget that... I hate to tell you this, but Wellbutrin, even though I take Wellbutrin, but it's... You do? I take it for a different reason. I take it for depression. I have to take two. I take Wellbutrin and Yeah, it says Prozac. you're supposed to take two a day. Well, mine, mine is, uh, I think it's 300 milligrams extended release. So mine is probably... I'm taking 100 milligrams. milligrams. Yeah, you're on Once. a tiny, tiny dose. So I had to pop my ass up out of the pit of hell, so... Right, I... I and it was, worked. It worked, so... Better it, living through chemistry. Oh, I know. I hate saying that. But I know, and I don't true. really want to take anything either. I don't want to take anything either, but honestly, I'm just... It's my... This doctor is like... She's this little Asian woman that lived in China for 22 years and lived in Japan for 10 years, and she came over here, and she went to medical school or nursing school, whatever, and then she decided she liked being a psychiatrist, and she is just like... Bum, bum, bum. I mean, she is seeing me and Marcella and Dave. She put us all on medication, like, within the first 10 minutes. She's like, you need this, 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 and this. I'm drinking alkaline water before I go to bed. I'm taking magnesium, gold something, G glycanate. something, glycanate. I'm taking a B-complex, and she explained to me why it was important to take B-complex, and like it got a lot. She got a lot of information in you in a very fast manner. Fish oil I have to take. Um, yeah, I mean it was instead of like saying okay, it's the problem is there was nowhere else for her to go but medication because I was. I mean I already eat really well. I already exercise. I right. I don't drink. I don't. So I mean I already. It's not like she could say all right, cut back on the crack. Stop doing heroin. Get off the couch. Stop eating hot dogs. It's not like she had to do any of those things. So I think that there was just nothing left but medication. Not bad. Not too shabby. So we'll see. If I'm, I'm doing, doing a low dose, not too shabby. it's not going to grow hair on my chest or anything. So I it's think not, I'll be... Yeah, it's not any or kind palms of... Or palms. No. You'll feel better a little bit. I have to feel... I'm sure... And I don't feel bad. It's just that, you know, I do recognize that... You know, I, and I did get really bad grades in school, and I had a lot of hard times concentrating. I just could not pay attention to save my life. I was promiscuous and hyperactive and all over the place mess. And if it could have been fixed <clears throat> with the awareness, you know, if it could have been fixed, then that would have been good. But they didn't but, know then what they know now. Well, they weren't testing girls. Yeah, and they also weren't doing the, they weren't doing this kind of research. Like, all the stuff that we know now, even 10 years ago, we didn't know. Yeah. Like meditation. Meditation actually rewires your brain. Now I'm not talking about emptying your mind. I'm talking about where you like something here. Okay, this ball of yarn. I'm just going to use this as an example. So like just doing a meditative focus on this for three minutes where you just keep drawing your attention back to the yarn. It's not that you're worshiping the yarn or that the yarn is fixing you. It's the act of, um, like if I think about her for a second, I bring it back to the yarn. But that is actually building new neural pathways in your brain. And so eventually you go off the old road, which is broken, and you start going down the new road that you've built. Hmm. And the longer you do it, the better you get at it. And you just start... You're talking about meditation. Meditation. I'm not talking about... I'm talking about just good old-fashioned, not zen or any of that. You're talking, talking about just being quiet and sitting in a room. Mindfulness. 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 Can you meditate meditation. when you're walking? 
Yes. Because I feel like that's what I do. Like when I go for my walks, I go for about two and a half hours a day. So somewhere between six and seven miles a day, I'll take this dog. And we'll go everywhere. We'll, we'll we'll jump across streams. We'll walk over bridges. We'll do all, you know, he does a cold plunge every day. Like we do this together. And I do find that, I, you know, I'm pretty plugged into my phone as in I'm talking to my friends and I'm talking to different people. And So what was I saying though right before it went off? What was I talking about? I have no idea. This is what... Okay. No, it's all good. It's it is all good. good. It it's is all, all good. good. All good. Did I... Wait, I didn't show one more stripe. Did I show these this time? I don't... I well, think we I have this those. one, and we have this one. And yeah. And we have... It's almost a... See how twinsies. similar they are? And then there's another one. Are they a different and, company? Yeah, they're different companies. I love I it. I think this is Mustache Yarn. I think this is Freckled Whimsy. And then I finished the Cozy Knitter one. So... I don't need so I don't need soft striping yarn anytime soon. Okay, no. Ooh, what else you got in there? Just balls. fun stuff. Nothing just balls. Really. She just Nothing. has balls. Yeah, she's got balls in there. Balls. I got balls. Um, yes, we do. Let's see if I got I got one more sock here. I didn't show, and I didn't show. It oh, before. that's an interesting yarn. That's a. Is that Arnie and son? Arnie and Co. or? It's Regia. Regia. I don't know if it's Arnie and Carlos, but it's definitely Regia. So, you know, I got lots. Let me eyeball that. I got lots of socks on the needles. So. It makes me want to knit socks, even though I know. I will regret it. I just think it's like. Are these they're the, You can have too many sweaters. I really believe that. But I don't think you could ever have too much underwear. Or socks. Underwear. So it's coming with this balls and underwear. <laughs> I think we're done. And Jesus. And, and Jesus. Ooh, balls, underwear, and Jesus. Sorry. You know, he has a really good sense of humor. Oh, I'm aware. So maybe. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm aware. You laughing? Ha <laughs> ha. I'm aware. Tee hee. Yeah, I remember the day God told me he thought I was funny. And I was like. Why didn't he tell you that? It's been a while. It's been about 10, 12 years. And was was just, it a voice in your head? It was just, it, it wasn't out loud. It was just, I just remember I was. It was it a was thought a, that popped in your head? It was a thought that popped in my head. Yeah. And I was, and I was doing something that I, sh I wasn't praying or anything. It just went boom. I think you're really funny. And I was like. You are funny. Oh, I know it. I'm <laughs> funny in a lot of ways. Funny I, weird. I, I have, uh, I like teenage boys. That's not that way, but. I'm, I'm good with teenage boys teaching them. I can get them to do, write papers, how specifically, and they'll enjoy it. So don't take that out of context. We'll have to go to Reddit and find out what, oh, what, what, um, Jesus, what the Reddit people think about Katie and her love affair for young teenage boys. Mm. Yeah, we might need to cut that out. But okay, we don't know. You'll never know what we cut out of here. Uh, and you'll never know all the stuff we had to that we lost. It's all good. It's all good. That's going to be a good book. You're going to enjoy that. I'm going to love this. I'm already upset. Oh, this, 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 this. <laughs> Did I show the Barbie up close? Do it again, just in case. I think you should end with that bar. That's That should be your screen. Pow! Right in the face. Pow. Barbie. Pow! With a cat or something. Oh, you hear the bird? She doesn't know the name of her daughter's bird. That's funny. Mm -hmm. We don't know if it's a boy or girl either. Mm. Have you ever smelled mothballs? Yes, I don't want to. How'd you get their legs apart? That's disgusting. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> well, sorry. All right. Can't help it. Okay, is that it? Did we do done. it? We're done. All right, well, that's the end. Hope to see you soon. I think I got her back on this channel now. Yeah, so we're going to have a good time. we're back. Yeah. And, um, and I, I love being back. Yeah. It adds it's to good my for life. us that to keep up with each other is really a nice thing because I consider you one of my best friends. That's what I consider you as well. Okay. Because so good. you've just always, I don't know, you and I just always have clicked. Yeah. We I have. remember the first time I met you, but we can talk about that. Was later. that at well, um, Mosaic yeah. Yarn Shop? Yep. I remember. You came in to get Ultra Paca mm -hmm. for a sweater? Yep. Was that the first time? It, uh, no, that couldn't have been the first it time. Was. 
It was? Okay. It was. It was the first time. And I said, this girl's fine. Sometimes. Well, first of all, you had to vet me, make sure I wasn't, like, crazy. Like, because everybody knew <laughs> I was Turns crazy. out you're crazy. Yes, I am. Yeah, it's all right. Crazy good. Crazy good. Good crazy. All right, what are you doing today for the rest got, of the day? I got to go and uh, birthday my 24-year-old daughter. Birthday her up. Because, you know, even adult children like birthdays. She's having a party at your house? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Lots of people. But that's okay. I've, I've already got everything done. It's all clean. It's all clean. Well, husband's cleaning. I did all the cleaning. Oh, husband's cleaning. Cooking. Okay, good. Yeah. What are you making? Um, I'm doing Mississippi pot roast. Um, mm. Green beans. Yum. And then I'm doing fake potatoes. Mississippi queen. Fake mm -hmm. potatoes. Cause fake? Just, you know, powdered. Oh. And then good. I made a gluten-free beehive cake. I'll, I'll put a picture up or something. Somewhere. Because mm. it's kind of cute. Beehive cake. It's just like a bunt cake mold. Oh, okay. It's just, you know, With little, beehive, little, little bees. Little bees. It's like a oh, hive. That's cute. You know, it's like a oh, hive. Oh, yeah. Because her name is Miss Bee. Oh. Amelia. Amelia. So it's not your daughter's birthday. It it's is. a daughter's friend? No. It's oh, my daughter's it's Amelia. Birthday. Amelia's yeah. your daughter. Okay. But I call her Miss B. Oh, okay. okay. Miss B likes doing it too. She's the one that works at the um, lawyer's office. Yeah. Anyway, we answer each other's Cessna Yes, we do. That okay. happens. All right. Well, we're going to say goodbye. And uh, everyone stay safe out there yes, and keep knitting. Till the day I die. Later. Thanks, Bye. guys.